Hi, my name is Richard Rousseau and today I would like to give you this video clip and I called it and God said let there be light. Okay, in this video clip I would like to bring you two concepts. The one is a uh, it's my own theory uh, about light uh, that you might find very interesting and the second one which you might find more interesting that I believe that science has now proven faith. So, um, but let me first um, go to the, my first theory. Um, it happened uh, that I was thinking about the, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy book the other day, and in it um, he asked the ultimate, uh, the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything, and he comes up with a stupid answer of 42. So I don't know why I was suddenly intrigued. I was just thinking about this book again and I went and I googled about 42 and I found that 42 is the only angle which make um, the, which make us see a rainbow. So 42 is crucial when it comes to rainbow and this started me thinking about light. And then at work, a colleague told me that I should watch the series Genius. And um, in it, Einstein asked the question, how can a wave light move through nothing space? And um, he started his career with this question. And uh, the answer for very, very long is that it can't. Obviously, they've answered uh, this question lately by saying it's to do with the magnetic field. But um, thinking about this movie and maybe subconsciously, I woke up the next morning and I suddenly had an idea that I would like to share with you. But before I do, I just want to read you something quick about the wave-particle duality. Um, we are faced with a new kind of difficulty, and this is uh, something that Einstein wrote. Uh, we have two contradictory pictures of reality. Separately, neither of them fully explains the phenomena of light, but together they do. This is just like a joke type of thing where light is a, you can read it as a wave or a particle. And uh, it seems like these two theories um, are in contradiction with each other and that um, um, no one can explain it. Okay. So, here is my idea. I woke up the next morning and suddenly in my mind I was thinking about a propeller of a ship or, or, or something like this. And I came up with this theory. My theory about light is saying that maybe light is a particle moving like a vortex uh, that we observe as a wave. Because I believe the current problem with the wave theory is that it doesn't have a depth, okay? And maybe this wave explains many other waves, but I believe when it comes to light, that maybe light, light has a depth um, um, and, and, and is a 3D thing and not a flat 2D um, movement. So what happened then, I started googling uh, for the word vortex and I found these amazing clips about the earth, how the earth move around the sun and, and it was quite interesting to, although we see it as circular, in reality the sun is also moving so the earth is moving like a vortex and this was exactly the idea. Now you can think if you observe this from the side, you will see a wave but actually it's a vortex that looks like, like a wave. So I'm just going to show you some, some more pictures. Um, so maybe you can go watch this thing. Our solar system is a, is, a, is a vortex. It explains my idea very much. So I believe that light, or maybe even inside a photon, looks very much like this. Because I believe that patterns repeat itself from micro small to the infinitely big, like in, 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 the, in the universe. I'm just going to show another picture here. <clears throat> this one is... And please go watch these uh, video clips. Um, our galaxy is a vortex. So here is the Milky Way galaxy. The sun is moving around it. And it looks like the sun is moving in a wave pattern. And But in reality, it is moving like this. So there is the sun and all the planets turning around it. And the sun itself is a vortex. So here you can see another example of something small repeat itself in the big okay so this is my whole idea that there's something wrong with our current wave theory around light it need to have depth 
So currently, if you measure any light or current um, through an oscilloscope, you will always find that the wave is perfect. So I've asked the question, if if things can really be flat, then um, it would it would look differently from the angle that you look at it. If you if you're looking at it from this angle, you will you will not observe a wave. You will observe a flat line. When you look at it from that angle, you will observe this. So basically, what I'm saying, it's interesting to me that the oscilloscope always give you the same uh, wave uh, wavelength and the same amplitude. That can only be possible if whatever you're measuring there actually moves and looks like this. Because in this scenario, the angle that you observe it or looking at it is never wrong. So I'm just saying this is um, showing me that 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 could be like this. Okay, that's point A. Point B, I want to talk about the drawing speed of, if, if, if you measure something on an oscilloscope again, a wave normally you will see it will go fast and then it seems to go slow and fast and slow and fast. Now what I want to say, the only, it's, it's, it's a strange uh, phenomena that the wave, although the forward movement is the same speed, that this drawing speed, it actually seems like it's going faster, slower, faster, s slower. But I believe in reality, if my theory is correct, that it's not moving faster. It's in in if if the it's just moving away. So so here yeah, it seems like it's going slower. Maybe the it's moving, it's moving um away from from you. So the speed of the particles stay constant, which will make much more sense than this current um, movement that we're seeing. Yeah. The other strange phenomena that I would like to mention is that if you shoot an arrow standing still and you shoot an arrow out of a moving vehicle, that that arrow will reach the target before that one. But when you do the same uh, principle with light, um, it doesn't matter if you're standing still or moving, they always hit the target, both will hit the target at the same time. But, but I believe the, the light from the moving vehicle will have a shorter wavelength like, like this, where this guy will have this long wave wavelength. Now, it's quite strange that the speed of light stays constant. So, yes, I, I agree that the forwarding speed of light stays constant. I believe in my vortex system, the particle now, I can say that although the forwarding speed is same, the particle in the in the moving vehicle when you when you shoot light from there the particle is actually speeding up so the particle is moving faster than this one so i'm just putting a little bit of logic back that it's an, although the forward speed is same the particle movement of that one is much faster than this one okay now i would like to discuss another strange phenomenon phenomena that you get that if you look at a wave, the short waves here has an in, the increasing in energy. So these ones have a high energy and these waves have a low energy. But very interesting, you would think that a high, that the penetration, if you um, shoot light through a glass or some water or some surface, that the penetration of this one is much lower than this. Now it's strange that the high energy one has a lower penetration. But if you look at my vortex wave system here, yeah, it's it sort of makes sense because this one here will represent a particle there that's moving very very fast in in, in, in very very short, while these ones here will represent a particle that's moving at a at a lesser angle. So those ones there have a fast angle where these particles are moving in a slow angle, and now. You can say the increased energy, they've got enormous energy turning speed there. So when that hits a glass or, 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 or something, um, the angle, because the, there's, there's, there's a lot of, um, at, you, you know, the angle is very, very skew. So that explains why a high energy wave like there has less penetration than these ones which apparently have lower energy because the angle that it does hit object and its penetration power is now much stronger so this vortex um, idea wave of mine explains this strange phenomena regarding energy and penetration okay um, let's just look at the different uh, colors 
Um, I have to believe you, you. Whenever I look at light, I never talk about the amplitude of, of, of light. Now I believe when you look at light, it's, it must be it must have lots of particles. Maybe each of these particles represents a different color. So I'm going to quickly discuss the other amazing, strange phenomena where you get always where you get the Mac, um, where you get the electrical field, which apparently moves like this. And then uh, there's a 90 degree angle always to it where you get the magnetic field. Now, um, I believe this idea of mine will explain it a lot because maybe this movement here, instead of just moving that, it's it's like it's like there. It's coming from behind. It's actually moving here. It's moving towards me. Okay, like like there, like that. It's, it's particle is moving towards me. Then it goes down, and when it goes there, now it's moving away from me. So it goes down, and there, the particle is moving away from me. Um, so that that is the actual movement of the, let's say, the electrical field. So what happened to, to magnetism? I would I would think that a particle um, um, sh um, throws out energy all time. So so at this point here. The, if the particle is there, a light particle, the energy that it that it throws out is in my direction, and that's why at that point, the energy is when you measure the um, the magnetic field, it's at its highest, and as the particle is going down there, so at that point there, the energy of that particle is in the movement of the particle, and it's now downward. So if I measure it from this angle, I get nothing. Okay. And now the particle's energy changes, and now at that point there, it's pushing everything at that angle there. So that's why at that angle there going in, it throws out a, a magnetic field the highest. And as it's turning its angle, so it's all relevant to the angle that you are measuring it. So I believe this idea of mine explains a little bit the strange phenomena where the angle is always uh, 90 degrees um, between the magnetic field and the electrical field. Okay, and with the same idea, maybe I can for the first time explain how a magnet works work with this theory of, of, of mine. Um, I believe that obviously you can have a vortex spinning in this one, is spinning in this direction, maybe like here, but I mean you can have the opposite of it, so depending if the two spins in the same direction or opposite, they might have attraction to each other. So I believe magnetic fields and magnets that push each other is very much based on a vortex, which based on particles. So just like I did here with a corkscrew, um, just by the way, I couldn't find any um, two corkscrews that are screwed into each other on Google or nowhere. So I had to buy two corkscrews and, and just test the theory because I was wondering, can this one actually go inside that one or is it going to get stuck? And it actually worked out very nicely. So I believe that this is the beginning principle of understanding how magnetism works because at the moment, yes, people know how to create a magnet, but they don't understand the forces. No one can in the physical world explain how a magnet works. Now, if it's particles moving like this, then it's very much I'm explaining attraction and um, yeah, um, through the same system. So I believe this theory of mine uh, that particles moving like in a vortex can explain um, or be the starting point to try to understand how magnetism works. So back to genius. So Einstein asked how can a wave light move through nothing space? So now finally I can answer him with my answer which is light is um, a particle moving in a vortex looking and acting like a wave. I just came up with this idea and I believe that time will prove or disprove this, this idea. Um, I know the current answer for this question of Einstein is, is, is something like it's, it's magnetic. Mag magnetism can move through space but it really doesn't explain it for me. So lastly, I would just like to uh, um, joke and say that the current wave um, will be an excellent symbol for the Flat Earth Society because if the Earth was flat, it would work perfectly. But I just can't believe that the current theories about uh, light and, 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 and the wave represents light because it's missing the depth. 
So lastly, I would like to show you this amazing clip. Um, new experiments show consciousness affects matter. Okay. Uh, please note that this might be this idea about consciousness is, is very much new age, but I believe we as Christians are um, missing out on, 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 on this. And um, because actually I believe that it's a principle that's been in the Bible and that uh, our Christians are not aware of it because most Christians just don't care about science, it seems. But anyway, um, I just want to read you out of Hebrew 11 verse 1. And now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So I'm going to end with this clip. But before I show you the clip, I want to quickly give you an overview. And um, basically, based on the double slit exp experiment, they show that when you open your eyes and you look at these slits, that you only get uh, that when you look a particle only goes through one slit at a time and the pattern that you get is 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 this okay when you close your eyes then suddenly all possibilities are possible so the particles you don't know through which one it goes through it goes through both and it actually forms a pattern that's not even possible so they talk about the the wave function collapse when you look so basically, when you don't look, all everything is possible, okay, like with faith. But when you open your eyes and you look, you're collapsing the impossible to only one possibility at a time. Then furthermore, um, they've also shown in this video clip about the quantum Zeno effect. So basically, if you close your eyes and you use your mind and you think it seems like statistically they can prove that if you choose the right slit, that most statistically wise, most of the particles will go through the right slit or through the left slit. But if you're not looking, so they are proving now that consciousness has an effect on matter. And that is exactly what the Bible says that faith is. The other interesting is that this effect is independent of distance. So, and I hope that these people will um, will grant me to to show you a shorter version of of this to help to get their idea out. So, God bless. Until next time, cheers. I assume by now everybody knows a lot about the double slit experiment, so I'm going to go through this very quickly. If you take uh, elementary particles quanta, photons, electrons, and so on. You send them through two slits, and you look at a screen to, to see what happens. If you don't know which of the two slits the particle went through, then you get an interference pattern. And this, of course, works just as well if you're sending a single photon or single electron at one time. The mystery is that as soon as you do know, by any means, which of the two slits the particle goes through, then you get a, a pattern that looks like it's particles. This is, of course, leads to the famous wave-particle duality. And in a much more pr practical sense, it leads to this sort of thing. The caption says, it says the cost of the flight went up because we acknowledged its existence. <laughs> so there's something peculiar about observation. So what we did in, in the laboratory is we, we built a double slit system, and fortunately it's a very simple type of a system. You have a laser, you have a filter, you have a double slit, and you have a camera that looks at the result. So the only new element in this experiment is that we ask people, in this case like a meditator, to keep the double slit in mind and to imagine in their mind's eye that they could see which of the two slits that the photon went through. Uh, this is, as, we could, as far as we could tell, the only way of directly testing whether consciousness is actually collapsing the wave function. So this is what the apparatus looks like. The tube sticking out of the long box there is the, the far end of the helium neon laser. And the, the, the uh, double slit and the camera are inside the box, so it's a sealed system. You can't see it with your eye. You can only use your mind's eye. So here's the result of the a 50 session pre-planned experiment using the same analysis that we had used in the previous experiments. And this gave us a five sigma result. So for those of you who are not used to the term sigma, it's, think of it in terms of z-score. It's the same thing, standard normal deviate. 
So we got a five sigma result uh, when people were observing and when nobody was doing the observing, we got almost exactly chance. Uh, when we do an experiment like that and we get a very strong result, if you keep in mind that a five sigma result was able to give uh, CERN the Nobel Prize for finding the Higgs, Higgs particle, which turned out not to be Higgs after all, uh, well, we got a five sigma result too, but I haven't heard from the Nobel Prize Committee yet. <laughs> And, and even, it, and we were also suspicious of it because that seemed way too good. So we decided to put the entire thing on the internet so we'd be sure that we could rigorously separate people by distance. So there's the double slip. This is sitting on a rack that has a bunch of servers on it. Uh, and we, we ran this uh, for three solid years, calendar years 2012, 13, and 14, ended up with over 5,000 sessions done by human observers, and 7,000 done by robot observers. And I'll explain what that means in a minute. For the, what we call the robot experiment, it was a Linux system which was designed to simulate a human. Now, the beauty of this is that the, everything was exactly the same as far as a double slit system was concerned because it didn't know, we think, it didn't know whether a human was looking at it or a Linux system because they both came through the internet in the same way. So we have very nice control for human observation versus we don't know whether a Linux system is conscious or not, but if it is, it probably doesn't have the same level of consciousness as a human. So this is the result of the sessions in 2012. There are 2,303 sessions done by the Linux system. Uh, these are the middle 20 fringes of the interference pattern. And it shows in terms of z-scores where it was. There's one or two of them that were around three sigma, uh, but overall it was pretty close to chance. And this is what we got with human observers. So some, again, approached five sigma differences. Uh, that was 2,089 sessions by 689 people around the world. So what's nice here is they're able to look at yet another issue, which is does distance matter? So this is the distribution of the effect sizes from where we were in California to the farthest that you can get from our laboratory, which is South Africa, which is 18,000 kilometers away. And so we did the uh, a linear regression. It turns out to be flat to six decimal places. So the observer effect is independent of distance. So this suggests that the observational effect we're looking at is, is an active effect. It's not simply that that consciousness collapses the wave function, but it more is that it's something like a quantum Zeno effect and it steers the direction that you're going. So when you take the overall results from 2013 and 14 and you reverse the sign of the results in 2014, you get a very healthy result for people and very close to chance for the, the robot sessions. So he was able to confirm that the results that we reported in that paper, which just came out this year, was correct. And a second analysis was done by Wolfgang Baer, who's a physicist in, in the United States, uh, and he independently verified that the results were correct as well, and he, he did publish that result. In terms of replications of the experiment, there is a physicist at the University of Sao Paulo, who I don't have permission yet to say who he is, uh, but he's Doing a replication, I actually sent him our little double slit itself. It's like a $200 piece of metal. So I sent him that, and then uh, two days ago I asked him, well, how's it going? I didn't hear about any results yet. So this is exactly what he wrote in an email. And the last days it has been an intense mixture of feelings. I'm oscillating between, oh my God, and wait, something must be wrong. <laughs> and this, by the way, is pretty similar to the results to the same feelings that we had when we were doing these experiments, because you don't often get results that are five sigma in any experiment, but it was showing up here. So the reason we kept doing replications is exactly the same sentiment that, that this physicist is saying. So what's the response to this so far? The response is this. <laughs> and the reason is, is clear. It's because extraordinary claims, require extraordinary evidence, and in this case requires dozens of independent replications for people to start believing this, and there aren't any replications yet, except maybe the one in Sao Paulo. So what's the overall reaction to something like this? We're saying, uh, would you look through the telescope? No. We don't want to. 
And the, the reason is this. So a lot of people have felt, and I've heard explicitly people saying, if this is true, we need to throw away the textbooks. So we can't throw away the textbooks because we know too much already. That is probably correct within each, each discipline in science. So here's my conclusion then. First of all, the role of consciousness in the physical world can be tested. It has been tested many times in many different ways. The results so far suggest that consciousness plays some sort of an active participation in reality. It may be that this is uh, the one that Newton missed. And I thank you for your kind attention.